Nate Goodwin was at work when he received a frantic call from his girlfriend. She told him his dog had been shot by a cop after biting a neighbor. He rushed home, not knowing the terrible chain of events that would unfold, making this the worst day of his life. It was a regular Friday in December of 2017. 46-year-old Candace Rose Bangs went to take the trash out for collection. She was visiting Macomb, Georgia, all the way from California. As she rolled the trash bin down the driveway, suddenly she heard barking and growling. She turned around and saw a pit bull mixed dog coming right at her. The dog bit Bangs in the back of the leg. She managed to get back inside and called 911. Soon, an ambulance arrived, along with Crawford County Deputy Wesley Neesmith. Neesmith took her statement of the incident and sent her off in the ambulance. Meanwhile, the deputy stayed to look around the scene. It wasn't long before he spotted the dog again. Neesmith saw the dog running toward another resident who was at the end of the driveway. The deputy drew his weapon and started yelling at the dog to get him to back away. Then he interviewed neighbors to try to figure out who the dog belonged to. He learned that the dog lived in the house across the street from where Bangs had been bitten. Neesmith decided to pay a visit. The deputy pulled up at Nate Goodwin's house, hoping to speak to him about the incident. At that moment, the dog appeared, charging towards him. Neesmith ordered him to stop, but the dog ignored him, barking and growling instead. The deputy then fired two shots at the dog. The animal fell to his death at the end of the driveway. That's when Goodwin's girlfriend came outside. Natasha Dakin had been inside the house when she heard the gunshots. She stepped outside and saw the family dog, Big Boy, lying dead and the sheriff's deputy standing beside him. She called her boyfriend, who was at work, and told him what happened. Devastated, Goodwin left work and rushed home, not knowing his day was about to get much worse. Once Goodwin arrived at the scene, Neesmith told him what happened. Big Boy's owner understood that the deputy was doing his job and did not fault him for shooting the dog. Then investigator James Hollis pulled up at the driveway. Goodwin saw him make a call to the local health department. Then the officer approached and gave him a ghastly directive. Hollis ordered Goodwin to cut Big Boy's head off. Horrified, he asked why. The officer told him the head had to be sent to a lab for testing to determine if the dog had rabies. Goodwin said Big Boy had been vaccinated and he could show paperwork to prove it. Hollis refused and told him he could pay a vet to do it instead. But that wasn't an option for Goodwin either. It was the holiday season, and Goodwin had just spent all his money to make sure his three children would have a good Christmas. He could not afford a veterinarian, but he still refused to behead his beloved dog. That's when things escalated. I will take you to jail and charge you, Hollis told Goodwin. Defiant, he asked the officer if refusing to decapitate a dog was a crime. Growing more impatient and angry, Hollis told Goodwin he could be charged with disorderly conduct. Neesmith then admitted they were confused too. If you would just listen, we don't know this process either, he told Goodwin. By then, Hollis had started to use physical force, grabbing Goodwin by the shirt and slamming him against the hood of his car. The man saw no other option but to comply. Heartbroken, Goodwin asked his girlfriend to fetch a knife from the kitchen. With her and the officers watching, he proceeded to slowly cut Big Boy's head off. He then presented it to the cops, but they declined to take it. Instead, they made him freeze it himself before taking it to the health department in nearby Roberta. That's when Goodwin decided to make his story public. After Hollis had ordered him to behead Big Boy, Goodwin took out his phone and began recording the altercation. He posted the videos online in hopes that something could be done to prevent this in the future. This was very traumatic for the kids and I, he wrote. I don't think anyone should be forced to do what I had to do. The videos went viral and sparked public outcry. Goodwin was interviewed by local reporters about the incident. The sheriff's office declined to comment but released a statement the following Monday. They claimed the requirements had come directly from the county's health department. It was true that Hollis had received the instructions from the agency, but further inquiry showed these were wrong. The McCone Telegraph spoke to Nancy Nightum, spokeswoman for the Georgia Department of Public Health. She confirmed that forcing Goodwin to decapitate his own dog had violated state protocol. The head removal must be done by a veterinarian or animal control officer, not only to provide a good specimen, but also for the protection of the person who removes the head, she said. In fact, Hollis had even put Goodwin's life in danger. Richard Kraft, who works for the state health department, said Goodwin could have been exposed to rabies if the dog was infected. 
Whoever removes a dog's head must have a pre-exposure vaccine or at least wear gloves, an apron, and eye protection. None of this information was conveyed to Goodwin at the time, so now he is taking legal action. Goodwin is suing the officers who forced him to cut off Big Boy's head for $75,000. Hollis's own office is also investigating the incident. State officials have admitted protocol was breached but lay the problem at the feet of the local health departments who are responsible for training law enforcement on such procedures.